Acts chapter 2, Wednesday night's a little bit unique where we're going verse by verse through the book of Acts. And uh, we have completed one chapter, y'all. Yes! It only took us like two months. Come on, somebody. But Acts chapter 2, we're going to read here. This is when the church began, and I don't think it's by coincidence that we're in this history in the making week where we're now learning about revival, but also about the New Testament church and how vital it is and how important it is. But in addition to that, what part we play in that New Testament church uh, and what God wants to accomplish here on earth. Tell the person next to you, you matter to the church. Say, you matter. You matter to the church. Every one of us does. I want to show you here as I kind of gave mention to when we were receiving the giving, but in verse 1, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, we're going to read four verses here in the service tonight as our teaching. The Bible says that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, say fully come, it says they were all, how were they all? In three accords. No, in what? One accord. Other translation will say together. The NIV or NLT will say they were all together. They were all on, on one accord. In other words, on the same page. They were all on the same page and in one place. Bible then says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. What came from heaven? A sound, right? The Holy Spirit. And it filled the whole freedom house. That's right. It says house. I added freedom in there. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit, capital S, gave them utterance. I want to draw your attention. They were all in one accord, in one place. Then the sound of heaven came to them. Um, I told you the midweek Bible studies, I don't always have titles because we're just going verse by verse. But tonight I do have a title. I couldn't help myself. I want to just entitle this one, The Sound of Heaven. The Sound of Heaven. Let's pray one more time. Father, we thank you. In all my handkerchief prayers, pray with me. I hope you're praying every day, Lord. We pray right now for the place we are, this moment, Father, this Kairos moment, Father, this this rain, this moment of open heaven, Father. You've chosen us, Lord, to carry, I believe, the baton for the next 50, 100 or some, whatever years you have for us here in Southern California, Orange County. You've given us a permanent location that is very significant, Lord, not for our glory, but your glory, a place that will be dedicated to you. And so, Father, my prayer is, it's not just about a place, it's about a people. Prepare us, Lord. Prepare us as, as your church, as your families, as men and women, as, as husbands, as wives, as children, as, as God, all of us, Lord, come to establish and overtake the darkness that is trying to overtake this state. And that, Father, your kingdom will be established, a light would shine in the middle of, of a godless area. It will be your church declaring the purposes and the principles of God. Father, and I know that as we build your house, there will be a generation of legacy that will come through us, Lord. Let us be in one accord in one place, and may the sound of heaven fill us up. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Give God a clap. You may be seated. And just tell the person, they say one accord, say same page, same page. Give three people a high five and say same page, say same page, same page. I want to talk today as we come to the Revival Bible study. We've been going verse by verse. I encourage you to go back and listen. We're going to start putting these um, Revival Bible studies on our YouTube channel like and subscribe. You know how everybody says that, right? And uh, <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. But anyway, so go to the YouTube channel, and uh, we're going to be putting the Revival Bible Studies on there. They weren't there previously, but if you want to go back and listen, there's a lot, a lot of information or a lot of revelation is going forward, and I encourage you to buy your own book, like, not book, but booklet, take notes every week, and you just, I know we're going to go deep into this, and as I mentioned, I'm going to do as much as I can to be here as many Wednesdays this year as I feel the Lord told me to teach our church about revival and the book of Acts. And so I hope tonight shows you how committed I am to that, that I ran over here and I can't wait to get into God's word with you guys, all right? And so, amen. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I love you guys. Amen. <coughs> Pardon me. And so I want to talk about what brought the New Testament church to have the sound of heaven. And what brought the New Testament church to have the sound of heaven was very important, and it's, it's something 
that is what the enemy is attacking. The enemy, when it comes to his attack in our lives and who the church is, he's attacking a very important area that will hinder or stop the Spirit of God from coming. And let's go back to verse 1, and I just want to show it to you here, and I'm going to kind of dig in deep here. But the Bible says that when the Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, and what that means, I, I should probably back up here. Pentecost, if you're taking notes, the word penta is 50. Cost is, is, a, is a celebration. And what Pentecost was, it was a celebration of the first fruits of the harvest that was brought actually from the Hebrew. The Israelites would celebrate. And so Pentecost was a celebration. Now, we as the New Testament church now celebrate Pentecost as the day when the Holy Spirit fell from heaven down to earth. It's when Jesus said the fulfillment. Mary said, go wait for the Holy Spirit to fall upon you. And so Pentecost to the Israelites was an, an actual offering they would bring. But for the New Testament church, it's when we received the greatest offering or gift from God. It was his Holy Spirit to fill us, okay? And so Pentecost, write this down, is 50 days after Easter Sunday. 50 days after Easter Sunday. And so Easter's coming up next month. I already see people promoting about Easter. You already know, come to church on Easter. But what was really the birth of the New Testament church, and I'm not downplaying Easter Sunday, please don't misinterpret what I'm saying, but Jesus wanted everybody to experience Pentecost, not just experience Easter Sunday. Are you following me? Because we have a church today that's excited about Easter Sunday, but has clueless about Pentecost. When the fulfillment of Jesus was, I want you to experience Pentecost, the Spirit filling you up, not just getting dressed in a three-piece suit and your flower dress. Come on, somebody. Okay, I'm not picking on you, but you know what I mean, right? Because Easter Sunday is going to be packed out. You already know, okay? We got a sunrise service. Yeah, right? And everybody gets excited, right? And we're going to have, and it's going to be beautiful. Don't get me wrong. We're going to celebrate the risen king. But it always blows my mind that when it comes to Pentecost, 50 days later, people are like, what's that? Well, not at Freedom House. You already know we're going to have Freedom House Conference. We're going to have Pentecost Week. Like, we don't play. Why? Because the fulfillment of why Jesus rose was so that you can go to the, have an upper room experience and experience Pentecost or the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, the Bible says for y'all that have been going verse by verse, remember, Jesus told them to go wait for the promise of the Father or the Holy Spirit. And when they went to the upper room, they were there, actually, for, Jesus walked 40 days, ascended into heaven, and they were in the upper room for 10 days. How many days? Can you imagine if we had a 10-day revival service? Some of you are already getting mad. 10 days. He said, don't leave there until the promise comes. So for 10 days, I don't know, don't ask me. They probably went to use the restroom, came right back, took a quick shower, came right back. Someone, some, the sisters probably made some lunch. Come on, somebody. Talento. You know, they probably brought some, hey, who, we just door dash it, door dash it. No, no, door dash it. You know what I mean? It's like 10 days they were waiting. Now, can you imagine day one, you're like, anytime now, Lord. Day three, anytime. Day seven, day nine. 10 days the Holy Spirit did not descend. Until the 10th day, something happened, and it wasn't that God changed, it was that they changed. Come on, somebody. It wasn't that God didn't want to send it. God would have sent it on the first day. But he was waiting for something in them to change for God to send the promise of the Father. Well, what was it? It was right here. It says they were all in what? One accord. What were they in? They were in what? One accord. A Honda Accord. Just kidding. One accord. You know those jokes, right? What kind of car did Jesus drive? Accord. Get it? One accord. Anyway. So... They weren't in a Honda Accord. They were in one Accord. In other words, they were in unity. Say unity. So they were all in unity. And then when they were in unity, go to verse number two. Watch this here. It says, then suddenly there came a sound from him. And I'll stop right there. So that means, watch this picture, okay? We're having Bible study. That the Holy Spirit was hovering over there, the place they were meeting, waiting for them to come into unity to finally blow like a mighty rushing wind. 
Could it be that the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to come into unity? Come on, somebody, with your spouse, waiting for you to come into unity with God's purpose, waiting for God to come, you to come into unity with God's church. He's like, I'm not going to send it until you come into unity, into agreement. Someone say, you and I, T-Y. Come on now. Let's remember that one. Y'all remember that one. Y'all remember that one. Pray for me. I, God still renew my mind after 25 years. <laughs> unity. Why? Because unity is you, you, and I together. Unity. The devil is not afraid of a big church. He is afraid of a united church. Come on, somebody. He is not afraid of, a, of a, just a Christian on fire. He's afraid of a Christian on fire who's united with the church of God. It is a unity that brings the power of the Holy Spirit in greater dimension. Write this word down if you're taking notes. If you're not, it's all good, but just write this down. Is God wants to take every Christian from an independent spirit to an interdependent spirit. Independent to interdependence. Okay? Interdependence. There's a lot of Christians that got an independent spirit. Oh, we going there tonight. Where it's I have an independent, in other words, I, I like to I like to be I like to be in the room, but I'm not in unity with what's happening in the room. And it's gonna hinder with the Holy Spirit power is gonna come to your life. I'm trying to help you this time. Because the Holy Spirit didn't fall until they were in unity and in one accord, then God breathed on that situation. In independent spirit, it's, it's, like, it's like just likes, likes to, likes, likes to uh, uh, um, hop around. You don't have a home church. Oh, I'm preaching real good on a Bible study night. Now we're going for it. It's okay. I didn't wear boots, but I'm stepping on shoes. It's all, I'm stepping on, on feet. Okay. You like to hop around church to church. You're not submitted to any house of God. You hear a lot of preachers, but you don't have a pastor. I'm on fire tonight. I am on fire tonight. You got a lot, a lot of, you got a lot, you hear a lot of sermons all day long. But who's discipling you? Who, who can get up in your face and say, you shouldn't be doing that? Okay. Amen. 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 Someone say Accountability. Let me tell you what accountability is. Accountability doesn't mean someone runs your life. Accountability is who can you be honest with. That's accountability. You don't have anybody you can be honest with. That's how you know you're not accountable. It's because you don't, you don't have anyone that you can be 100 with, and your spouse don't count. Okay? I do have someone to be 100 with. It's my wife. That's not, not, not don't count. It's my husband. Don't count. You need someone where you're planted it's a, a, either a, a pastor, a leader. You go, this is my church. This is the vision I'm a part of. And I could be honest with somebody and they can speak into my life. I always say, uh, I had one mentor tell me like this. They said, Josiah, you will only be as sick as your secrets. You will, I'll say it one more time. A mentor told me, he says, you will only be as sick as your secrets. If you don't have anybody you can be a hundred with, that'll be what'll take you out. And the longer you go without that, the sooner you're going down. Because as soon as Satan gets you thinking, you don't have to tell nobody. He already got you with his grip. Here, where does Satan operate? Satan operates in the darkness. So wherever you are hiding stuff, they are giving him permission to operate in. I'm, oh, come on, somebody. So accountability isn't, nobody tells me what to do. No, accountability means I have someone I can be honest with. And they hold me like, this is, this is the 100. This is, the, this is where I'm at right now. And I have people in my life that hold me accountable. Why? Because I can be honest with them. And they're going to help me. And they're going to tell me, hey, boom, boom, boom. Así es, así está. Sas. Come on, somebody. All right? So someone say unity. Okay? Now, what does it mean to be interdependent? Interdependent is this. It means I'm good, but I still need someone. Okay? It is the opposite of codependent. You know codependent? Codependency is, I need you. Right? That's, that's, that's unhealthy. Like, we don't want you to be codependent 
on people in the church. And single ladies, please don't be codependent on a boyfriend. Don't let me turn this into a dating service. Okay? Because you go all in. I give you everything. It's like, you know. And then you find out you give him everything and he's going to let you down because he's human. And then he only have God in his life. You double mistake. You become codependent, and codependency always leads to disappointment because nobody can be, there's no human you can be 100% dependent on. Does that make sense? Okay? So, like, my wife, and, and I, 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 please, my wife needs to be dependent on Jesus. She dependent on Josiah. I'm going to let her down 10 times out of 10. Come on, somebody. So, you need to be, in, what is interdependent? Interdependent means I'm good, but I need somebody. Does that make sense? Interdependent means I go to church not because if I don't, no, no it's like, man, what's up, what's up, fist pumping, good to see you, girl. Hey, what's up, girl? Because, you know, and you, 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 you need people, but you're good. Does that make sense? I'm interdependent, and I want to be in unity with what God is doing there. Someone say unity. Now, this is so valuable and so important because the Bible actually says that the Holy Spirit would not fall until there was a unity, a one accord, and a one place. And I'm praying, man, I am praying that we all come together. And it's not just about Legacy Sunday, but as a church movement, I believe that when I look back on the 15 years of our church, Freedom House, the years we have been the strongest, winning the most souls, seeing the most people get delivered, seeing the most people be discipled, seeing the most marriages being healed, is when the church is in unity, when the dream team is serving, come on, when the, when the men are praying, when when the ladies aren't gossiping, come on, the young people are loving God, the student camp is going, the conferences are happening, and when the church is in unity, there's a sound, a power from heaven that fills the room. If you would work on unity, God will fill your house with his spirit. Take this to your home, your marriage, your kids, work on unity. Work on, if you work on unity, God will fill it with his spirit. Did you know the only time we find out Jesus' prayer, okay, now we're really going Holy Ghost. This wasn't in the notes. Hi, okay. Matthew chapter 6, you know we call it the Lord's Prayer? That's not the Lord's Prayer. Okay, I said something to shock you a little bit. I was like, like, what? That's the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, we call it the Lord's Prayer out of a religious statement but that was not Jesus' prayer. Jesus would not pray that prayer because that prayer has, it says, forgive me of my trespasses. I forgive those. Jesus had no trespasses. Jesus had no sins. So that got named the Lord's Prayer, not by Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. That got named the Lord's Prayer by, by really traditionalism. But that should really be called the disciples' prayer because yeah, we're having Bible study tonight. Come on, somebody. That's the disciples' prayer. You and I should be praying that, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus doesn't pray that prayer because that prayer says, forgive those who's a, who have trespassed against me. Jesus has no trespasses. Are you, are, you, are you following me? Okay, that's the disciples' prayer. So I'm giving you meat and potatoes right now. The only, you want to know where the Lord's prayer really is? Okay, get your Bibles. Go to John 17. We're going to find the real Lord's prayer. We are shown one time in Scripture where Jesus actually prays. And he's praying for real, for real. In John 17, he begins to pray for this. Watch this here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're about to have some Bible study. John 17, Jesus begins to pray. Let me just take my Bible there. I'm going to tell you the exact verse in the name of Jesus. John chapter 20. John chapter 17 and verse 20. Watch this now. No, no, go to 13. No, go to 6. Just kidding. 13. John chapter 17. We're having Bible study. Come on, somebody. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, 17. No, verse, go to 15. Sorry. Read the whole chapter. Just joking. <laughs> you know how you go. Okay, John, yeah, go to John chapter 17, verse 15. Okay, we're in Holy Spirit. This wasn't in my notes. This is just flowing. Let it flow. It says, watch what Jesus says. He says, my prayer 
is not that you take him out of the world, but that you protect him from the evil one. You see that there? It says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. And as you sent me into the world, I, am, I send them into the world. For them I sancti sanctify myself, and they too may be truly sanctified. Watch verse 20. Notice it says in your, in your translations, Jesus prays for all the believers. You see that there? Okay. This is what Jesus says. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also that those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be what? Someone say unity. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that they may believe that you have sent me. Verse 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me. I can't even get into that about how God has given you to carry the glory of God. You're supposed to carry God's, let me just give you one nugget. You're supposed to carry God's glory. You're supposed to be not your glory, but God's glory. You're supposed to be a mirror of heaven. That when people see you, they're supposed to see the glory of God all over you. They see the, they, oh yeah, you can clap right there. They're supposed to see the glory of God on your life. You're supposed to reflect his glory. But unfortunately, some people reflect the gory. Come on, somebody. It says, the glory you gave me. That they may also, watch this, they may be one as we are one. He says, I in them and you in me. So that they may be brought to complete what? There's our word, unity. Watch this now. Then the world will know that you sent me, and I love them even as you have loved what? So what was Jesus' prayer? That his church would be in unity. Okay, here's a heavy one. But this one, God can't answer this prayer. You want who answers this prayer? We do. Wow. Turn your neighbor and say, wow. Right? This one God can't answer. This one we answer. This one we decide if we're going to be the answer to Jesus' prayer. Am I going to be in unity or am I going to be in disunity? And how do you know you're in unity? You're, 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 you're you know, just write this down. Number one is, is you have your hand to the plow. You're pushing the vision of God's church forward. You're pushing the plow. You're, you got your hand to the plow. It's the whole, the whole antithesis of not just being a, an attender, but a participator. Does that make sense? Like, and, and, please, and please don't take this as a beat-up session. I, I want to build you up, okay? But allow me to be honest. Can I be honest, okay? Don't, don't, please don't, don't be like, well, Pastor, you know, let's, let me be honest. Come on, somebody, okay? Let me pastor you. Because if not, the danger is we become consumer Christians. Is we consume at the house of God, but we're not in unity with what God is doing. Does that make sense? We're not building the kingdom. We, 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 we take it, we come and we consume, we consume. And it's consumerism, Christianity, that will kill a move of God. Amen. You know, because some people walk up into church and, and they think it's like, like you know, like, 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 like okay, I'm just, okay I'm, I might be ranting here, but forgive me, okay? Just, let's just stay with me. Like, like, people come to the church and they'll, like, review a church like if it's like a restaurant. Like, are you okay? This is the house of God, man. You didn't walk into, this, this, ain't, this ain't you Mr. V's restaurant. Come on, somebody, Okay. You know, come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're working with volunteers here. These are volunteers here. Come on, somebody. Like, in case you missed it, like, like this is vo volunteers serving Jesus. You know, I don't really like the kids' church because I really know they're volunteers. And everybody wants, want, you know what? I need a better kids' church. Why don't you serve and help us make it better? I'm going to clap right there. Amen, amen, amen. You know, it's like, what, what you think? They, we hire them or something? Like, they're serving. And they come in here and want to just beat up the whole church. They're like, like, really? You know what I'm saying? You know, I didn't know. You know, I didn't, I didn't like the chairs. It's like, it... <sighs> praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, I better stop. I told you I was going a little rant. Pray for me. Okay, you know, it's like, th 
And this is what could happen. And, and listen, I, the world, I get it. They're demon possessed, and they're they're you know. Sorry, I was a little, that was a little tough, right? They're, they're, I, I get it. The world, they're not saved. They don't know Jesus. Like no problem. They're gonna cast stones at us. We can deal with that. But the heartbreak is when it comes from those that are like, I'm part of the kingdom. It's like, if you're part of the kingdom, then come help us. Come help us. Come put your hand on the plow. Come serve with us. Come help us. You know, the bathrooms were dirty. We got an extra brush if you want to wash them. They didn't like that one. They didn't like that one. You know, I went in, the bathrooms were dirty. Oh, my God, how gross. So if you want to help, we got two extra squeegees. Come on, somebody. Come and help us, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry, I ranted. Someone say unity. It's like Jesus was like, come into unity. I want you to go into the upper room. And I'm telling you, the move of God that's going to hit Southern California is when the Christians, the believers, the disciples, the people of God, we come under unity and say, Lord, go ahead and move. And I'm telling you, the spirit of God flows when there's unity. It flows when there's unity. And, and, and yeah, I am going to say this. The second way you know there's unity is, number one, your hands to the plow. You're in the place, but also the sound that comes from your life. Just write that down, and I'll get the sound that comes to your life. Just write number two somewhere, the sound that comes to your life. I'm going to give you two points right now, and I promise this is going somewhere. The sound that comes to your life. Because then the next verse, the Bible says here, watch this. It says that, the sound of heaven, Acts chapter 2, verse 2, it says, the sound of heaven. Watch this now. I promise you. Put the verse up. You can't reach Acts 2, 2. Yeah, there it is. It said, and suddenly there came, what did there come from heaven? A. So the New Testament church was marked by the sound. Okay? How it sounds. Like, how does it sound? You know, you just cl- kind of close your eyes and you go, what does it sound like? Because everything has a sound. Are you, are you following me? Sadness has a sound. <laughs> okay? Complaining has a sound. You know, you know, I was thinking. Complaining has a sound. Yes or no? You know. You already know. Here we go. What do I know? What do I know? You know, it's just, it, complaining has a sound. And all the parents said, Amen. that's right. It has a sound. You know, they're suffering. You know, you ain't suffering. You don't know nothing about suffering. I told my kids, you know, I'm starving. You don't know nothing about starving. How many, how many know kids are crazy? Come on, somebody. I'm starving. You ain't starving. I'll teach you starving. Anyway, I better stop. So, <laughs> anyway, complaining has a sound. Yeah, it has a sound. Anger has a sound. You know, anger has a sound. All of this negativity has a sound. Gossip has a sound. Pain has a sound. I could keep going. Everything has a sound. But you know what else has a sound? Joy has a sound. Say, come on, somebody. Power has a sound. Victory has a sound. Come on, somebody. Overcomer has a sound. Faith has a sound. Come on, somebody. Everything has a sound. And I find it so interesting that the first thing God filled the New Testament church with was with the sound. It was a sound. There was something that made it different, not because it looked different, it sounded different. It, there, was, there was this freshness. There was this, this feeling of what God wanted to do. There was this, 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 like, uh, uh, this, this wanting to, to hear it, this wanting to, to be in it. And so what is the church supposed to do? Point number one, write this down. i got to wrap this up and then bring the piano player up here. But the church is to amplify the sound of heaven. The church is to amplify the sound of heaven because God wants us to have our sound, guys. And when it comes to 
being in unity with God wants to do and the church being powerful, it has to do with it having a sound to it that God wants us to amplify from not just here in this room, but to the ends of the earth, to our homes and everything we do, that we are to sound like heaven. Now, this is a heavy statement I'm going to make. Are you ready for this? God didn't send the look of heaven. He sent the sound of heaven. Okay. Could it be that we're trying to make our lives look like heaven instead of sound like heaven? We, do a, we get ourselves all fixed up right. I'm trying to look good. God says, I'm trying to get you to sound good. Come on, somebody clap, 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 clap. Maybe we're too caught up with the look of heaven instead of the sound of heaven. Because God said, what I'm going to put in my church when they're in unity is I'm going to put a distinct sound, a distinct nature that's going to make them sound not like the club, not like the clique, not like the, not like the homie's house, not like the friend's house, not like the bar. Not, I'm going to make my church have a sound that is unique than any other sound, not like a football game, not like a basketball game, but it's going to have a sound. And I believe this is what the devil attacks, is to make the sound of, of the house of God be, like, depressing. Come on, somebody. It's like, oh, you know, church, oh, you know, the church. Oh. And it's like, man, let's correct our sound. And, and I'm going to pray tonight that the sound of heaven begins to fill our life once again. That the sound of heaven begins to fill your marriage once again. The sound of heaven begins to fill your parenting once again. That the sound of heaven begins to feel the call of God over your life once again. Because you used to serve God with the sound of heaven, but now it sounds like... You can fill in the blank. Oh, you know, I just, God, no, Lord, I want the sound of heaven to come from my life while I serve, while I do what God is calling me to do because God wants this. Now, the sound is very, very interesting, and I've said this before, but it bears repeating. There is a powerful sound God wants to bring from his church because when God wants his church to be in a location He wants it to be a force in that city. I'm going to say it again. God wants his church to be a force in that city. God wants the church to be a force in the nation. God wants his church to be a force on social media. God wants his church to be a force around the earth. Why Why do you think that there is such a great influence to silence God's people? To try to rob your sound to silence your faith, to silence your praise, to silence your conviction, to silence your voice. They want the church to be quiet while the world is getting turned, come on somebody, all the way up. We need to be people that ain't afraid to make sure that we know what God is doing in our lives. Why? Because here's the fact, we win. I said we win. I said, we won. I said, we got victory. We're the ones who are above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. We got, we're the ones that should have this sound on our lives. Point number two, write this down. Don't ever mute or lose the sound of heaven from your life. Now, obviously, the sound of heaven is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we'll talk about it in weeks to come. But for now, I just want to zoom in on this sound of heaven, of how we're supposed to have it. And I want to leave you with this encouragement. Don't ever mute or lose the sound of heaven from your life. You ever realize, like when people first get saved, what, they, what they sound like? Like when, you, when they first give their life to Jesus, like they just got saved, and you're like, man, I just gave my life to God, and, and I'm excited. And you ever seen how the sound, they're like, I'll be at air. I, was just, I just want to read my Bible, and, and they're excited. And then it breaks my heart when they go from, from just, you know, happy and saved to they become a cranky Christian. Do you, do you know any cranky Christians? Just look straight. Don't, don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Don't point. Definitely don't do that. Do you know any cranky Christians? You know? It's like, what happened? Now you got cranky. Now the AC can never be right. 
The sound's always too loud. The lights are too bright. Someone took my seat. You know, then that one time, it's like, look at me, look at me. Don't ever become the cranky Christian. Don't become that judgmental. Look at the church is not perfect. I'm not perfect. It's like, you know, people, here's this new cool word people are using. It's really cool. I got church hurt. I'm, I'm going to go on record saying this. I loathe that statement. I got church hurt. Church hurt? How come you never say you have club hurt? I'm going home. Bye. How come, they always say, how come you always say you got club hurt? How can you say, you know what, I'm club hurt. Last time I went to the club, that one bartender didn't say hi to me like last time, and that one girl didn't talk to me, and that one guy gave me his number. How come you don't say you got club hurt? You didn't get club hurt. You're still going back to the club. You're still going back to the bar. All of a sudden, you're, but all of a sudden, your church hurt? Stop the nonsense. Stop the drama. Stop letting the devil use your statement. Get healed. Get delivered. Forgive and worship God and at least give God what you give the devil. Somebody give God a praise up in this place. Shout amen. Give someone a high five and say, I can't get church hurt because I've got club hurt. Come on, somebody. I was at the club one time. The bartender didn't talk to me. I didn't go, I'm club hurt. I'm never going back there. I even paid a cover charge and I didn't have fun. It makes, this stuff makes no sense, guys. But we, we, like, we try to like get real, real hipster, real smart. Just, just follow the Bible. Be in unity. Die to yourself. Die to yourself. If you try to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll gain it, Jesus said. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Okay. You know I'm compassionate and empathetic. If anyone ever hurts you, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not saying what they did was right. I'm not okaying whatever they might have done if somebody betrayed your trust. What they did was demonic, and they should. And don't worry, God's going to get them back. Don't worry. The revenge is not yours. It belongs to the Lord, okay? You keep loving God. You keep serving Jesus. You keep, but you got to forgive. But don't get, don't get caught up in these, like, words that aren't even biblical, okay? That was pretty good, huh? Hashtag church hurt, club hurt. Come on, somebody. Amen. All right? Stop it. Tell you never say, stop it. Come on, stop. Stop the madness. You know what I mean? So people go to cranky. Someone say the sound of heaven. I just want, I want to leave this thought. We're having Bible study. We're going verse by verse. God didn't send the look. He sent a sound. I'm going to say it again. God didn't send a look. He sent a sound. God didn't send a look. He sent a sound. God didn't send a look. He sent a What is the life sound of your life? Does it sound like heaven? That's a good place to pause. Let's bow our head right there. What does, what does our life sound like? What, are you, what does your life sound like? And I know, listen, I've seen people with stage four cancer in their body. Their body looked like sickness, but they sounded like heaven. So powerful. I've seen people with facing diagnoses that they look like death, but they sounded like heaven. I've seen people with eviction notice saying but I know God they have vic they have the sound of victory and what is the sound God wanted to correct the sound of his house that's why I believe in this season the sound that's going to come out of this church and this house and on us as a church as a people it's going to be a sound of freedom a sound of victory a sound of healing a sound of abundance a sound of prosperity a sound of miracles I believe that new building we're just getting a bigger speaker sound that's going to be a sound of God moving in Orange County and to the ends of the earth because God I want to get this thing right Lord 
just I want you to reflect right now because you will be tempted for your life to sound not like heaven but if I could be honest to sound like hell let me show you this last verse I don't I don't want to skip over this Matthew chapter 22 then we're going to pray I got to show you this because it's it, I want to prove to you that the enemy attacks your sound and everything I, I always like to do is biblical Matthew go to go to that verse Matthew yeah 12 22 watch what happens here it says then a demon possessed man who was blind and couldn't what speak was brought to Jesus and he healed the man so that he can both what speak and what I want you to remember this verse because this is what the devil tries to steal over God's people he tries to steal your voice and your vision he tries to steal your voice so that you don't sound like heaven you sound like the other place so it's a sound of demonic of hell we got to sound like heaven why because that's where we come from and i'm not gonna let the devil steal my vision or my voice in jesus name come on somebody hey thanks so much for watching our service at freedom house oc don't forget to like and subscribe it's always my honor my wife's honor to bring you god's word and i know that god's best is in your future make sure to share uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.